Welcome to another Tech Help Q&A by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's question is about backing up the data in your database. And I'm going to show you how to do a quick record backup. In other words, before someone edits a record, we want to keep a backup of that data. We want to keep any changes that they make so we can see what has been changed. Today's question comes from Simon. It says, I'm playing around with action queries in Access 222. And you said, before you run an action query, you should always back up your data. That is sound advice. That came from me, so of course it's good advice. And I always follow it, but just for the hell of it, I tried something with an action query and it worked, but I was just wondering if you would consider it to be sound practice. In the customer table, I created two more fields called updated, a yes, no, and old data, short text. In the update query, I was changing the company name, so I also made the update put the company name in the old data field and mark the updated to true. The result was the company name was updated correctly and the old company name was stored into the old data field and the updated was set to true. It did not matter how many fields were arranged in the query. It would always work the way I wanted to. Can I rely on this result to be constant or could it be hit or miss sometimes if the old data field gets the old or updated value in the query? Well, the only problem that I see with this is that you're limited to that particular field and if the user makes a change and then makes another change and then another change right away, you've only got one field in there. And this is the whole reason why we want to use relational tables. I would use a second table to store your backup information. Just create like a customer backup table and then every time that record is edited, just drop the, whatever the record currently is into the backup table. That way you've always got an unlimited number of backups for that customer. You can see all the changes to all of the fields in that table. I cover something very similar in my Access Security Seminar. I'll give you a link to that at the end of the video, but let me show you real quick how I would do this in just a few minutes. Okay, basic customer database, customer template, right? Here's my customer fields, first name, last name, address, city, state, and so on, and a basic customer form. Now, assuming that our users can only access the database through this form, right? They can't go in and directly type into the customer table. We can use a form event to basically take this information here and drop it into a backup table. So first, let's create the backup table. All right, customer T, let's make a backup table. I'm just gonna copy and paste this guy, copy, paste. We'll call this customer backup table. All right, we'll just copy the structure only. We don't need the data. All right. Now, a downside with this method is that if you make any changes to the customer table, if you add any new fields, you'll have to also put them in your backup table. Otherwise, the query won't work. So that's one downside to this method. Okay, let's design this guy, design view. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off this guy being a primary key, and I'm going to change auto number to just a regular number. So let's go with number of type long integer. And that's because um, when I copy, let's say Richard Rost is, is user number 14, I want to be able to copy that user number 14 multiple times into this table. You could set up a second primary key field if you want to in this table, but I really don't see it being necessary. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and put date updated right down here, and that'll be a date time. And the default value will be equals now. And that's so I can keep track of when this change was made. And if you were following along with my access security seminar and you've got user logons set up, you can actually track in here who made the change, right? Changed by, but we don't have that set up in this simple database. So right now you'll just be able to have the date and time that it was changed. Okay, so now we have a receptacle, a place to put our data. Let's make a, let's save changes here, yes. Let's make a query, an append query, that will copy the current record on the screen into this table. All right, so leave this form open so we've got an ID here to work with. All right, now we're going to go to create, query design, add tables. Uh, actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is change it to an append query that, that adds records on the end of a table. All right, append to which table? We're gonna append into our customer backup T in the current database. Hit okay. Now add the customer table as a record source. I'm gonna close this now. All right, I'm gonna add the star, all fields. That means copy all the fields from customer T into customer backup T. Again, that's why they've got a match. You can do individual fields. If you don't care about all these fields, you don't gotta bother with all these. If you only want a you know, customer name and address and you don't care about all the rest of the stuff, then, then don't, but I'm just gonna do all the fields. But I need a criteria in here to know which customer to copy. So that's gonna be the customer ID, all right? And you can leave this here or not, I'm just gonna get rid of it. 
And then for criteria, it's going to be equals forms customer F customer ID. In other words, find the record in the table where the customer ID equals the current customer. All right. If you go to display mode right now, you'll see just that, just Dick Ross. And yeah, it says Dick because I was playing around earlier. All right. We're going to change that in a minute and you'll see how it works. All right. But if you run this query right now, go ahead and run it. Nothing appears to happen, but if you open up your customer backup table, there it is. All right, the append query ran. If I run it again, oh, got to go to design and then run. It should show up in there a second time. Okay, it's going to append each time we make a change to the form. Let's save this guy as my customer backup queue, my customer backup query. We can close it. Now, what do we use to trigger it? Well, I want it so that as soon as the user starts typing or changing anything in this record, it automatically runs that append query in the background. So we could do it with one line of VB code or we could use a macro. I'm a VB guy, I like to use VB if possible. I only teach macros just like for theory. There's really no reason for, to use macros now, I don't like them. So right click, design view. Let's open up the forms properties. So by double clicking on that little box right there, you should see property sheet, make sure it says form. Now, there's a bunch of different events in here and I cover all these events in my full classes. You'd think you want something like before update or before insert. No, the one that we want is on dirty, believe it or not. That's the best one for this particular instance. As soon as the user starts making an edit, the record becomes dirty. In other words, the record exists in the computer's memory, but it hasn't been written out to disk yet. And that's when we want to grab it before any changes are made. So it's on dirty. As soon as the record becomes edited in any way, hit the dot, dot, dot button here. The visual basic editor appears. Now you might see a little window that says, what builder do you want? Pick the code builder, all right? And right here, all we have to do is run the query that we made. All right, so it's do command dot open query, customer backup queue, and that's it. All right, there might be one other thing we might have to do in a second, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But this, this should work. All right, I'm gonna save that, and I like to leave the, the, the window open on the side. I just kinda like slide it over here, all right? Let's see if it works. Close this, close this, open up the customer form. Now I'm going to change this back to Richard. Now, as soon as I type in that R, see that pencil that appears right here? That means the record is dirty. And at this moment, that record should exist in my customer backup table. Let's go take a peek. Yep, there's three of them. See that? All right, let me finish the edit. All right, now if I move to a different record, I'm done editing. That record gets saved in the table. If I change it again, let's change it to Joe. All right, now Richard should have been saved in there. See, there's Richard. Every time you make a change, no matter what it is, all right, let's say this is now Fort Myers. All right, I'll come back to it, and we'll now we'll make this Joe Smith. And now you'll see the previous one with the Fort Myers is in there. See that? Every time you make a change, the backup information gets saved to the table. Now, why I said there might possibly be something you have to take into consideration? Well, there's a couple of settings that I make in Access to make things easier, my, my preferences, and I teach these in my full classes, but if you go up to File and then come down to Options, all right, under Client Settings, there's an option right here that says Confirm, and then there's Record Changes, Document Deletions, and Action Queries. Action Queries is normally checked on, and you're going to get a little warning message every time that query runs if this is on. I like to leave it off because I don't care about action query notifications. Just like another one that I always change on a current database is I always change it to overlapping windows instead of tab documents. I teach this in my Access 101 class because I hate tab documents, all right? But if you want to be like me and be cool, all right, turn off the action queries here. If you don't want to, all right, you can circumvent that with a, with a little bit of code. All you have to do is come in here and say do command dot set warnings and then false. All right, you don't want the warnings on, but make sure you turn them back on afterwards. All right. In other words, you're going to turn off the warning messages for one command and then turn them back on again. If you don't want to make that setting in access, or if you're going to share this with the people and you, you don't necessarily know if they're going to have that setting changed. And another thing I was a little worried about, but it doesn't seem to be an issue, is if the customer ID was blank. If you're trying to uh, run on a, a new record, but it doesn't seem to be a problem. But if it was, you could just put in here if is null forms 
uh, customer F, customer ID, then exit sub. But you don't you don't need to worry about that. I just tested it and it seems to work fine, especially if you have the warnings turned off. Okay, but this again uh, is all, really all you need is this one line of code, and if you make that simple little change. All right, all right. So if you care about more than just a simple track of the backup data, all right. If you really want to care about you know who did it. And you want to make sure that they can't go in and edit your tables and, and, and change the backup data itself. If security is an issue, get my security seminar. I'll put a link to it in the, uh, in the description below. But if all you want is a simple little backup for yourself, then what I just showed you is fine. And if you want to learn about any of the other topics that I talked about in today's tech help lesson, uh, the now function, field types like auto number and that, append queries, I've got an append query lesson available. I'll put a link to that below. Uh, warnings, the on dirty event, all that stuff. I've got full lessons to cover all this stuff. So I hope you learned something today. Make sure you check out the template section on my website. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see when I release new videos like this and make sure you ring the bell, hit the little bell button and pick all because then you'll get notifications. You'll get an email every time I post a new video on YouTube. And if you want to see your question answered just like this one, you can send it to me on my tech help page. That's where you get priority, by the way. Send it there on the tech help page. You can email me if you want to, but if you send me a big long email without it going through the tech help page, I might or might not read it right away. I'll read all of them eventually, but I sometimes if I see a big long email coming through regular email, I just I snooze it until I have time to read it. I've got forums on my website that you can participate in. I've got a pretty active Access Learning Zone Microsoft Access discussion group on Facebook. There's all my other pretty stuff, YouTube, Twitter, my blog. Okay, here's the shameless advertising portion of the class. All right, you watch the free lesson, now I get to now I get to advertise to you a little bit. Uh, access level one, three hours long. Three hours long. All right, watch it. If you want to learn the beginning basics of access, or if you got a friend that wants to learn access, point them here. And then if you want to continue on, level two is just $1. And I've got a special membership option available as well where you can get half off by getting a new class every week and all the way up to my developer stuff. All right, that's it. Thanks. We'll see you next time.